So what we're going to do today is show you the difference between watercolor, acrylic, and oil in a painting I'm going to do three times. Um, it's a little squirrel. It's a cute little guy that I managed to take a picture of in one of the Tarpon Springs parks last year. I just dropped this whole phone in the paint using a different apparatus to hold it. So I'm going to try something else now to hold it so that you can see me when I'm painting. I apologize. My painting videos are not that professional. They're just me at home trying to paint and show you what I'm doing. Anyway, hopefully you'll see the difference, the advantages and disadvantages of each medium. And you can choose, choose which one you like the best, depending on what you're going to be painting that day. If you are painting with watercolor it's quick easy light convenient and you can do a lot of detail with it you cannot however go over it much without possibly ruining what's underneath it because it's never really a hundred percent fixed on the paper it can always be altered or even destroyed if you're not careful with oil you may have to let it dry in between layers, but if you're doing a la prima and you're trying to do it all at once, you have to adhere to certain policies like trying to put the dark down first and uh, or not messing into your white if you put that down first because it starts to smear and spread, which is exactly the advantage of oil when you want it to smear and spread and blend. So there's the advantage of that. It's very vibrant colors and it gives you lots of texture. But it is hard to do tiny little details because you need like three hairs on a brush. And it may or may not show up as easily, depending on if, if you put texture down already. Trying to get some whiskers on top of texture, texture would be very difficult. And then we finally have the acrylic, which I think is a very versatile, wonderful medium. It hasn't been out that many years. I mean, my whole lifetime, but that's not that long. And uh, it... You can use open acrylics, which act a lot like oil. I don't particularly care for them. I'd rather just use oil. But if you use the regular acrylics, they dry very quickly, almost instantly. Within several minutes, if you're out in the sun using them, they dry really fast. You have to keep on aerating it to keep it from drying too fast on you. But it's wonderful because if you change something or you make a mistake or you want to alter it, it takes nothing for you to just go in there and go right over it. Even if you painted white, you can go over it with black. If you painted black, you could go over it with white and it's a complete cover. So again, like oil, you don't get as much detail as you would in a tiny little watercolor brush, which can make a line as thin as a pencil, like a pencil line. But it also has beautiful, vibrant colors and you can take it on a trip and have it completely dry without worrying about it getting all your stuff ruined or getting smeared while you're trying to get it home. So those are your advantages and disadvantages and I'm going to show you the three of them. Just a little bit of each painting so you see how I did it. And then the final result. You'll see if you like one over the other or if you just like all of them for different reasons. Okay? So here's the little guy I'm painting. It's from a photo I took at the park up in Tarpon Springs. He's hanging out of a tree and looking adorable with part of his face in the sunshine. I started with this gradient of blue and lightning as it goes down into a little bit lighter like the sky was that day. And then I sketched my squirrel in. And then I put in some of the background that's going to be the tree which is going to have to be a lot darker than this. Then I'll go back in and I'll continue to darken it, but I'm also going to put in the gray of the squirrel. There's going to be very little difference between the squirrel's coloring and the tree coloring. There'll be just a little bit of highlight on that squirrel, so you see it is squirrel fur back there. But mostly... The part of the squirrel that you're going to notice is that little bit that is captured right there on the edge of the light. Let's see how we do. I know I'm jumping ahead here quickly, but like I said, I can't really show you what I'm doing with my watercolor as I'm doing it, but I will show you more when I do the acrylic. If you notice one of his eyes is redder because it's in the sunshine. And I'm trying to make that look a little bit like fur. So I'm not painting it smoothly. I'm kind of doing it roughly, scumbling it a little bit. 
and he gets more and more developed until he's finally the cute little squirrel that he was. It's very hard to get that nose aligned with the mouth when the head is turned that way, but we did okay. I just did my light colors first and then I just put a little darker and a little darker and a little darker. Here's my little watercolor and I have re-sketched him in here. It's not exactly the same. I've gone back to the original to make sure that I've corrected myself and gotten everything straight. Every picture I start differently. Today, I'm going to start with this little triad area here. I want the light, the squirrel's little face, the dark side, and the tree so that I can see how dark to key these colors or how light to key these colors. So we're starting with right around his face and then we'll work out from there. So just working around that face to see how light I need to get the light side of his face and how dark I need to get the dark side of his face. So that is one of my darkest darks next to my lightest light, and now I know how light I need to make that face, which I need to make it a little lighter, just on the light side of the squirrel's face. I made my own brown, so then I make a really dark color when I mix that brown with ultramarine blue. just like I was trying to key the light and dark side of the face to the rest of the painting, I then go in and put my darkest darks in all the places in the painting where they go. Then I can key the rest of the painting to that. Generally, when you paint a person or an animal, the eyes are the focal point. The pink in his ears and on his nose is precious. I tried some ultramarine blue and it's too dark. So I went into the cyan blue. leaving a little bit of a halo around his body there where I'll work out his fluffy fur later on, a little lighter right there. I'm using a little lighter blue on the bottom, a little darker on the top. So now I've got the sky in, and I mostly use cyan blue and white with a little bit of ultramarine blue and a tiny bit of yellow ochre on the bottom. 
lots of ways that this tree could have been put in. I could have put the whole thing in with a medium color and then added my lights and darks, but I am instead doing it kind of piecemeal, a little dark, a little light, a little red, a little brown. It's kind of boring to watch an artist paint and make decisions and go over things, correct things, do the same thing over and over. It looks like you're just watching the same strokes. Looks like it's not accomplishing anything. Some paintings take 45 minutes, some take three hours, some take three weeks. So you're better off to speed it up a little bit, cut a lot out. A lot of artists show you very little in the painting process and you tend to think that it's a miracle that this very talented person just put down a few strokes and bam, they made a painting. You could never do that. It's impossible. But the fact is that art is basically following a set of rules that you have to learn. It is hard work and if you enjoy that work, it's wonderful. And that's the most important part is you have to enjoy it because then you don't mind doing it. But it is a set of rules that anybody can learn. So pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing here, putting in the little branches of the tree, little twigs and leaves and some moss hanging from the tree. You'll see that in the oil painting, I'm able to put a little more detail in the light part of the moss. Now I could have gone into my watercolor and used some gouache to make that moss whiter than what I did, but I chose not to. In this painting, I can easily put in my titanium white and lighten the moss up. I think in this instance, I actually used zinc white because I didn't want it to be too white. Here's my acrylic attempt coming up. No, I did not draw this exactly the same. <laughs> and as you can see, I think I have a little bit less sky in this one. I think I've placed him a little bit more on the right. It's late at night when I'm doing this. I'm draw the little guy in twice and then I was done with drawing him. Didn't want to draw him a third time. So he's going to stick out a little bit more on the right than the other two did. Acrylic is a joy to paint with.
You can be so carefree. It doesn't matter what you do because you can fix it in a heartbeat. I can go ahead and put it all down almost solid and then go back in easily and add colors to it to lighten it up. So generally I do go darker when I start with acrylic. basically blocking in my main shapes. Even though there are subtle nuances in those shapes that I will later pull out, lightening and darkening to show the bark of the tree, I just put the basic shapes in to start. Now I just start throwing some colors in to make my bark. And I won't show you the tiny details on this, but I will show you the completed painting after I'm done with the basics. And you see the tree is starting to look a little more like a tree. Our little guy is getting his face. His little pink nose. Bring his eye down just a little bit and you can clearly see how easy it is to change acrylics. If this were oil or watercolor, it would be a lot harder. Bring him up a little bit. And then I will show you the final product in just a few moments, and we can compare all three of them. Okay, guys, here's the three paintings. Hopefully they don't fall down while I'm trying to show them to you. This is the watercolor. I just got a tiny bit of oil on it. I have to get that off. <laughs> but you can see when you look at his little whiskers, little tiny fine details. If you look in the eyes, you can see there's even color in there. It has no texture, it's just flat. But when you paint it correctly, you make the appearance of texture. A very easy, quick, thing you can paint. This one took the least amount of time. Very transportable. You can bring it on any trip without a lot of stuff in your pocket. A small bag with your small amount of watercolors or gouache is very easy to take with you. I have a very quick go bag I use just for that. Then over here we have an oil which I cannot touch but yes it has texture and I love the texture. I guess oil is always going to be my favorite. But you can see his little whiskers do not have a lot of detail like the little guy over here does. Why? Because no matter how small a brush I used and how much I thinned out those whiskers, I could not get the whiskers on as finely as I could the watercolor. But he has beautiful vibrant color and I really love the tree and his pink ears, he's precious. And then lastly, we have our acrylic, which I took some license and I painted him with some fun colors and just thought I would enjoy him. I guess he has colors a little more like a mouse than a squirrel, but that's okay, I don't mind. I think he's really cute. And again, I couldn't get those whiskers in that well because, yep, 
acrylic paint is thick too. You could use those little liquid acrylics, but even those are not as thin as some watercolors, but they're thinner than regular thick, heavy bodied acrylics. I had some fun with the color of the tree. I made his coat very multicolored and I added a little more color even in the back where the moss is hanging from the tree. So there's the three of them. This one is almost dry. I just finished it and in five minutes it will be dry, which is the advantage of the beautiful acrylic. So you can look at the three of them and you can decide which one you think is your favorite. Which one looks the most like a little squirrel hanging from the tree with his, part of his head sticking out into the sunshine. I enjoyed doing this and I hope it helped y'all to see the differences between the three mediums and you can decide which one you like the best. Or maybe if you're like me, you'll love them all.